So the previous sophomores recently graduated and they're about to take their licensing exam. So they're wondering how it's like to be a nurse working on the floor. So I showed them a picture of me of when I started working. Here's the picture. You see, it's not so bad. All right, enough with the jokes, let's get started. COPD, COPD stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It's made up of two things, bronchitis and emphysema. Now, the reason why COPD happens is because of damage. Long-term exposure to irritants causes damage to the respiratory tract. The most common irritant is gonna be smoking. Another reason why this COPD can happen is because of genetics. Specifically having an alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. All right, let's take a closer look at COPD. Bronchitis involves inflammation of the bronchi and the bronchioles. The patient with bronchitis is also going to experience a lot of mucus and secretions. That's why they're coughing all the time. Now, emphysema means destruction of the alveoli. If you remember from AMP, the alveoli are these tiny little sacs that cause gas exchange to occur in the lungs. That's what lets you remove CO2 and intake O2. Now these are destroyed, so there's not gonna be any air moving back and forth, and the air becomes trapped in there. Here we see bronchitis on the left, and we see how the bronchioles inflamed and constricted. We also see on the right the emphysema, and we see how the alveoli has been destroyed and trapped air is stuck inside of it. So what does this all mean? It means the patient's gonna have a really hard time breathing. They're gonna have a lot of secretions. They're not gonna have good oxygenation because of all of this. So let's take a look at the symptoms. The patient can experience cough, mucus, shortness of breath, especially with exertion. For example, when they get up, go up the stairs. Orthopnea, is, which is a fancy word for saying they can't sleep laying flat. They can't lay laying flat. An important question you need to ask them is how many pillows do you need to sleep on? The more the pillows they need, the worse their shortness of breath is. The other thing you need to know is that these patients have something called barrel chest. Barrel chest means their anterior posterior diameter is increased. That's a really, really fancy way of saying they're shaped like a barrel. Their left to right is the same size as their front to back. That's why it's called anterior posterior diameter increased. All right, the next symptom is clubbing, but not this kind of clubbing, this kind of clubbing. So we see the fingers are and fingernails are bent and discolored. This is what happens after long-term hypoxia. So after a long time of not having good oxygenation, the patient's fingertips start to change this way. The patient also has weight loss. They're really thin, and the reason for this is they use a lot of energy to breathe. They use a lot of muscles in order to breathe. They also have hyperresonance. This means when you percuss their abdomen, when you percuss them, you can hear it a lot more. The reason for this is because of the trapped air that's inside. So not only does that trapped air cause hyperresonance, but it also makes it really difficult for the patient to be able to expand their lungs. And because the patient is having such a hard time breathing, they tend to run low O2 stats, around 90%. There's two complications I want to talk about. The first one is a, a COPD exacerbation. This is essentially just worsening of symptoms of COPD usually because of pneumonia, but it can be because of other irritants. This can lead to respiratory failure, which means the patient won't be able to breathe on their own anymore. How you know if their respiratory system is failing is the patient will start using accessory muscles. These are muscles we don't normally use, but we use when we really, really need help breathing. The patient can also use intercostal retractions, meaning you can see their ribs. The reason this happens is because of how hard the patient is breathing. The intercostal muscles are actually sucked inwards in between the ribs when the patient breathes. Another sign of respiratory failure is when the respiratory rate goes down. This happens after the patient tires out. They essentially just give up the ability to breathe on their own. All right, the next complication is not really an emergency because it takes so long to happen. It's called pulmonary hypertension or core pulmonale. What happens here is essentially right-sided heart failure. Now, how does COPD cause right-sided heart failure? Like this. If you remember the pathway of the blood, the right ventricle must push blood, squeeze, and then push blood up the pulmonary trunk and then into the lungs where it gets oxygenated. 
But if the lungs are messed up from COPD, then it's a lot harder for that right ventricle to push the blood against it. And this causes the right ventricle to work really, really hard. Now, it's gonna work really, really hard for a long time and eventually it will hypertrophy, meaning it'll get bigger. Then it'll stop being as elastic and eventually lead to heart failure. The first diagnostic you need to know for COPD is called pulmonary function test or spirometry. This is when the patient inhales really deeply and then exhales forcefully into a device to see how well they're breathing. This is how they get diagnosed with COPD. The next diagnostic you need to know is a chest x-ray. The reason why is because pneumonia. Pneumonia is one of the triggers that can cause COPD exacerbations. Because of this, we need to know that the diagnostic for pneumonia is chest x-ray, and what we're gonna see is fluid in the lungs. We can also see the lungs really hyperinflated. All right, so the treatment for COPD involves helping the patient breathe better. So this involves raising the head of the bed, providing low O2 at two liters nasal cannula. Now it's really important that you never give COPD patients high flow oxygen. Don't blast oxygen at them. And the reason why is because their body's gotten so used to the low oxygen that their drive to breathe has changed. Now they breathe because they're low on oxygen. See, people without COPD, they breathe because of high CO2 levels. But people with COPD don't breathe because of high CO2 levels because they're always high CO2. Instead, their bodies change the drive to breathe to low oxygen. So the moment you blast high oxygen at them, their drive to breathe goes away and they no longer breathe anymore. And for this reason, we use low O2 with nasal cannula, but we can also use something called a Venturi mask. A Venturi mask is a really precise way of giving oxygen. They have these attachments that go to the Venturi mask and they're color coded depending on how much oxygen is needed to be given to the patient. The next intervention that can be done is something called chest physiotherapy. This involves tapping the patient's back to loosen up secretions, but I've never seen a nurse do that in my life. Really what happens is the respiratory therapist comes in with a device that vibrates on the patient's chest, loosening up the secretions. A vest can also be used to vibrate on the patient's chest to loosen the secretions. And so you guys know that kid probably does not have COPD because it takes years and years of smoking for COPD to occur. He probably has cystic fibrosis. And while we're talking about smoking, definitely smoking cessation is one of the things that you want to mention to the patient with COPD because that's what causes it. The next thing you can do is place the patient in the tripod positioning and it looks like this. And this is so they can get better lung expansion. They don't have to work against gravity. It's easier to breathe this way. They can also go over a wall. They can lean on a wall as well. And next is purse lip breathing. And this helps eliminate CO2. And it does this by expanding the alveoli that are collapsed. Another name for collapsed alveoli is atelectasis. And the last thing a patient can do is a huff cough to help get the secretions out. All right, and we're finally at medical interventions, and this is the easiest part. They are identical to asthma. So if you haven't learned your asthma meds, go learn them now. Essentially, it's albuterol and anticholinergics. All right, guys, that is everything you need for COPD.